Hello, and welcome back to Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and today I wanted to go over a classic chess game from history. And that is a chess game from Vera Menchik, who is actually the first women's world champion. Um, Judith Pulger is probably a name uh, most chess players are familiar with. Uh, in the uh, history of women's chess, and especially uh, women breaking through into that uh, really top, top level of chess, competing with the top players in the world of any gender. Uh, Judith, of course, uh, was in the top 10 and uh, was, was one of the greatest uh, female players of all time. But a name less familiar is this Vera Minchik name. And she actually was also competing with some of the uh, best chess players at the time, including uh, Max Oiva, who became a world champion later on. And so today, I want to take a look at one of her games against Max and see uh, what she managed to accomplish against the future world champion, future at the time. So let's see what the game started with here. It was d4, d5, c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, d takes c4. We have a slav where black goes ahead and takes on c4. Of course, white wants to regain this pawn, so she plays a4, preventing this move b5. Black takes the time to develop his bishop out to f5. Now we see e3, uh, regaining this pawn without too much controversy con Controversy here. Uh, black plays knight a6, white captures on c4, and now after knight b4, uh, black is making this uh, slightly strange maneuver to try and put some pressure on these light squares for white uh, that look just a little bit airy. Uh, white uh, is not afraid of this though, and simply castles. Knight c2 doesn't really achieve anything here. Uh, in fact, e4 might be a winning tactic for, uh, for the white player. So instead of knight c2, simply e6. And perhaps the true purpose of this knight is to help control this d5 square, rather than go in for these light square attacks. Uh, knight e5 is white's choice. Uh, black continues with bishop d6. And now we see queen e2, a very common move in the Slav, just preparing this uh, break with e4, supporting the pawns from behind, and also allowing this rook the very nice d1 square. And now black plays a very silly move, which is c5. It's simply a little bit too early to go in for this kind of pawn break, uh, because the move c5 is actually giving up too much light square control uh, on this diagonal in particular. Uh, Vera actually plays this move, bishop b5, checking the king, and there's no comfortable way to respond to this check. You of course can't play knight c6, this knight will be captured, and the king and rook will be forked. You don't have enough uh, coverage over the d7 square, white will simply capture there as well. And so, you must move the king here. In fact, king f8 is the best that black can do, but now white can respond very naturally with the move e4, uh, taking more space in the center. In fact, in the game, Max actually played a worse move, king e7, and this move is, is far, far too ambitious. The idea of king e7 is probably that black wanted to get this rook out of the way before bringing the king to f8, but you simply don't have time. Uh, white plays very actively, still playing this break e4 in the center. Black must retreat the bishop. And now white snaps this bishop off the board with knight takes g6 and h takes g6 h takes g6, and now after e5, uh, white is simply tactically already winning a piece. Uh, she has simply outplayed Max from the opening, and she doesn't let up from there. Uh, Oive uh, continues with c takes d4. White brings this rook to d1, not immediately capturing either of these pieces. And there are some fun tactics here as well. For example, if you think you can take this knight, you're a little bit wrong. Rook takes d6 comes on the board. And after the queen moves, white can play, pawn takes f6, not caring about this rook because you develop with tempo, bishop f4 check, and after king c5, checkmate is incoming for this king. Um, so rook d1, a very nice move, keeping as much pressure as possible, bringing more pieces into the attack. Bishop c7 uh, tries to save the bishop, but now white simply captures this knight, and after takes... Note that black has made a threat to the h pawn, so white takes the time to defend it, simply g3, and of course this pin still exists on this pawn. a6 was what black tried to try and remove this piece from uh, its very active square on b5. 
But here, uh, Vera actually just totally ignores this threat, instead playing bishop e3. The idea being, if black wants to regain his piece, uh, he has to allow something like bishop takes d4, when after a move like bishop c5, you're going to be losing this piece, losing your queen, losing all sorts of things. And in fact, bishop d6 simply doesn't really help. You can imagine queen f3, and after e5, bishop c5 can come on the board anyways, uh, with this bishop all pinned up in all sorts of ways. So you cannot take this bishop on b5, instead max defends his pawn on d4, but now after a simple bishop c4, uh, black is starting to find safety for his king, but the safety is not enough as white has already won a full piece in this position. We see rook h5, this bishop comes out to f4 now, and e5 solidifies the pawn chain just a bit, but now g4 for white uh, creates a very nice little outpost for her bishop here on g3. Queen e7 to follow, and now uh, she plays knight d2, rerouting this knight just a bit. Rook h e8, uh, we see this queen come to e4, uh, Vera choosing instead to get the knight out of the way so the queen can be the more active piece. Queen d7, knight f3, uh, queen c6. Uh, Max actually realizes that he's going to be coming under a little bit uh, too much pressure after this move g5, so he takes this time to offer a queen trade, and Vera actually obliges here, just going into an endgame up a piece. The game continued with bishop d5, rook c8, bishop back to e4. Uh, Max now tries to make use of this c file, but it's simply not enough. This knight comes back to a nice blockading square on d3, also supporting the c1 square for the rooks. Knight e7, we see a couple more trades come on the board. King f1, rook c4, and now after bishop b7, rook a4, it's white with control of the c-file. Uh, black plays g5, simply f3. The extra piece is all you really need to know here. The bishop comes back to e1, uh, very activating all of her pieces in this endgame. Bishop d2, and now uh, black tries to break free with f5 but it's simply just not working. G takes f5, a4 from black, and now simply king e1, not even taking any of these garbage pawns. She'll collect them later. a3 is black's choice, trying to make use of the second rank. Simply b4 from white is good enough. We see king f6, and now bishop a6 is a very, very nasty move, simply bringing this bishop over to the c4 square where it is finally realized that this rook is totally trapped by its own pawn on a3. Uh, so takes, takes, and now the end of the game is very, very near, with Vera up an entire rook here. The game did continue for some more moves, though. We see bishop d8, bishop b6 check, king back to f6, bishop g4, hitting this pawn, knight d5. Uh, she collects this pawn, knight takes b4, simply bishop e4, and after bishop e7, knight d3, Knight a2, rook c6 check, king g5, rook g6 check, if I can play it, king h4, now after knight e5, knight c3, king d3, uh, Max went ahead and, and resigned in this position. So a very nice game from Mara, she was winning from the opening, she kept up the pressure, she kept up some very active pieces using some very nice tactics and uh, managed to win this game against uh, world champion Max Oiva. Uh, and I wanted to show this game because I think Vera deserves a lot more uh, fame, a lot more popularity than she currently has. She's one of the all-time greats in the game of chess, and uh, she was kind of Judith Polgar uh, almost uh, a, a hundred years before Judith Polgar it was, was playing chess. And so be sure to check out more of her games, be sure to read up more about her. She is in the World Chess Hall of Fame, there's a very nice entry about her that I would recommend checking out. But for the moment, that's all from me. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and I will see you in the next episode.